Today I want to talk about vitamin C and its potential as a treatment for cancer. Uh, first, just a, a brief history and uh, explanation of vitamin C and its purpose in the body. So it's been known among human societies for millennia of the need for uh, fresh greens, or in the case of the Inuit, uh, raw meat to prevent uh, certain conditions. Uh, in this case, scurvy. Uh, scurvy is a condition in which uh, you suffer weakness, anemia, bruises all over the body, uh, bleeding and loose teeth, and it's eventually fatal. It, it primarily impacted sailors and uh, soldiers that were you know, far on land. The beginning of the understanding of the importance of uh, vitamin C didn't really begin until the 18th century. In 1747, in, a, in an experiment that James Lynn did for the uh, British Navy, uh, he found the only uh, effective uh, treatment for scurvy was the use of oranges and lemons. Later, the British Navy would start using primarily uh, limes because that was what was available in their colonies at the time, and that may have been the, the origin of the term limeys. Then in 1928, Albert Sassent Georgi isolated a substance from the adrenal glands, which he called a hexaronic acid. Then in 32, Charles Glenn King isolated vitamin C in his laboratory and concluded that it was the same substance. Norman Haworth deduced the uh, chemical structure of vitamin C in 1933. Vitamin C is uh, also known by the name ascorbate, or the uh, scientific name uh, ascorbic acid, and it's known to be necessary for the uh, growth, development, and repair of all body tissues. Uh, it's involved in various uh, body functions, including uh, collagen formation, absorption of iron, the immune system, wound healing, and the maintenance of cartilage, bones, and teeth. It's also one of the many antioxidants that can protect against damage caused by harmful molecules called free radicals, uh, as well as toxic chemicals and pollutants like cigarette smoke. Uh, however, uh, vitamin C is not stored within the body. It, any excess is excreted, so uh, one has to continuously uh, ingest more vitamin C and the recommended daily allowance is between 65 and 90 milligrams. Uh, the limit before toxicity is about 2,000 milligrams or mega doses or all over 2,000 milligrams of daily vitamin C intake is known to, uh, to cause the risk of diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, heartburn, abdominal bloating and cramps, headache, insomnia, and kidney stones. Much of the interest in vitamin C was because of Linus Pauling and his studies and advocacy of its use as a treatment for cancer. He uh, had a bachelor's degree in uh, chemical engineering and a PhD in chemistry with minors in physics and mathematics. Uh, in 1954, he received a Nobel Prize in chemistry for his work in determining the chemical bond between atoms which allowed uh, molecules to form. Then in 62 he received a Nobel Peace Prize for his work with the St. Louis Citizens Committee for Nuclear Information and its help in getting the uh, Partial Test Ban Treaty which was signed in 1963. Uh, however, uh, Pauling never had any uh, education as a clinician or in medicine in general and this would uh, plague his work in uh, vitamin C as cancer treatment. In 1976, uh, Dr. Pauling and Dr. Ewan Cameron did a study of uh, 100 terminally ill cancer patients and found that a majority of them who were treated with uh, 10,000 milligrams of vitamin C per day survived uh, three to four times longer than a control group. However, this study had numerous problems. To quote from the study, we believe that the ascorbate-treated patients represent a random selection of all the terminal patients in the hospital, even though no formal randomization process was used, which, uh, to put it mildly, is uh, not standard practice in a clinical study. Uh, further, uh, the vitamin C and control groups were not matched uh, properly for the 
stage of the disease. And the vitamin C group were labeled uh, untreatable uh, earlier than the control group. Then the Mayo Clinic did uh, three follow-up studies and they were unable to find any benefit. Dr. Pauling objected to the uh, Mayo Clinic studies because uh, those patients had received chemotherapy. However, his initial study uh, also had patients who had received chemotherapy. Uh, however, he did continue to advocate for vitamin C in the popular press, particularly in books. And he went so far as to uh, bury the work of his uh, former student and uh, associate at the Linus Pauling Institute, uh, Arthur Robinson. Robinson, in his own studies, found that uh, mice that were fed at quantities equivalent to Pauling's recommendation for humans contracted uh, skin cancer almost twice as frequently as the control group and that only doses of vitamin C that were nearly lethal had any protective effect. Uh, after he reported this to Pauling, uh, Robinson was asked to resign from the Institute. His experimental animals were killed, his scientific data was impounded, and some of his research results were destroyed. In 1983, uh, the suit that uh, Robinson had filed as a result of all this was settled out of court for $575,000. Uh, in an interview uh, quoted in Nature, uh, Pauling stated that the settlement, quote, represented no more than compensation for loss of office and the cost of Robinson's legal fees. However, in the court approved agreement, uh, it was stated that uh, 425000 of that settlement was a result of uh, slander and libel. In 1994, uh, Arthur Robinson uh, summarized the results of his uh, mouse studies that he carried out at the Pauling Institute. Um, these involved him uh, giving nearly all of the mice uh, squamous cell carcinomas, a type of skin cancer, through exposure to ultralight uh, radiation. And what he found was that the uh, rate of onset and severity of tumors could be varied by as much as 20-fold by just uh, modifying the dietary balance. Uh, diets with the worst balance of nutrients actually had the greatest inhibitory effect on cancer growth, and no cures or remissions were observed, although the researchers weren't actually looking for that. Because of all this, um, like I said earlier, uh, interest in vitamin C is uh, cancer treatment uh, was a result of uh, Linus Pauling. This interest in vitamin C as cancer treatment was uh, dampened within the scientific community because of all that Pauling had done. Uh, however, there were a few uh, who wished to uh, vindicate him in later years. Because uh, earlier studies had focused on oral administration or through diet, uh, the later studies of vitamin C uh, focused on intravenous administration. Uh, just a few notes, however, before I get into the later studies, uh, just to clear up any potential confusion. Uh, in Because uh, in cancer studies, uh, they'll often use, uh, well, as in other diseases, they'll study it first in, uh, in cell cultures, and then they'll move on to animals. So in vitro refers to uh, performed outside uh, the body. So this would be a study that would be more of a cell culture. And then in vivo, that would be, say, a rat or a human study. In 2005, Mark Levine did an in vitro study in which he showed that vitamin C was uh, four to uh, 20 fold more lethal to cancer cells as opposed to normal cells at concentrations that are achievable through uh, intravenous dosing. Uh, at around the same time, there was a best case series of uh, just three patients in relation to uh, vitamin C as cancer treatment. The first patient had a renal cell carcinoma with uh, lung metastases. These uh, metastases, however, were never biopsied, so uh, it's unclear whether they actually were renal cell carcinoma. However, this patient received uh, 65 grams of vitamin C intravenously twice a week for 10 months. Uh, the patient did have a remission, however, she also received other alternative treatments at the same time as she was getting the vitamin C treatment. Then four years later, she developed a small cell lung cancer, and 
she didn't respond to uh, vitamin C treatment. The second patient had a primary bladder tumor with uh, multiple satellite tumors that were removed surgically and then the patient had multiple types of alternative therapies in addition to the vitamin C. Finally, the third patient had a stage 1 diffuse B-cell lymphoma and uh, took radiation therapy but uh, opted instead to have vitamin C therapy instead of chemotherapy in addition to other alternative therapies. Yeah, radiation therapy used to be the common treatment for uh, that type of uh, tumor and it was uh, well known to produce uh, long-term survival in such cases. But in any event, with all three uh, cases, the patients were taking other alternative remedies at the same time, so it's unclear whether the vitamin C was uh, actually effective. Another issue with the case series is that it was done over many years, and it's unknown as to how many cases it took before they were able to find the three that they did use. Then in 2008, Levine did another study of uh, mouse tumor models, first in vitro and then in vivo, and he showed that uh, at high doses, vitamin C would inhibit tumor growth. In that study, he also referenced a phase one clinical trial of high dose intravenous vitamin C for use in advanced malignancy and uh, found that even at high concentrations, uh, the vitamin C was well tolerated. However, that trial didn't show a single objective response. Later in 2008, there was another study that found that uh, large doses of vitamin C could actually interfere with the effectiveness of uh, known uh, chemotherapy agents. Uh, this study used concentrations of uh, vitamin C that were 10 to 20 times lower than what Levine was using. And at these concentrations did not inhibit or stimulate growth of cells. Another note is that these agents have uh, various uh, mechanisms of action. So whatever vitamin C is doing is probably more of a more general as opposed to uh, some kind of specific uh, antioxidant effect. Also, because of the difference in concentrations between this study and Levine studies, it's unclear whether uh, vitamin C at the concentrations Levine advocates for would, uh, would cause a similar effect in humans or whether the higher concentrations would actually aid with uh, chemotherapy. Then in 2014, there was a study of patients with a late stage ovarian cancer. The two groups were one, uh, a group that received uh, carboplatin plus uh, paclactic cell, and then another group that received the same plus vitamin C. This was a small study with about a 20% dropout rate, and the vitamin C group uh, had no difference in overall survival and its biggest benefit was that for the uh, least serious of adverse reaction events. Um, so this is really just a summary of just some of the, the research as regarding uh, vitamin C as cancer treatment and it and frankly it just doesn't look very good for vitamin C. It, it could potentially be effective but the evidence so far is not that promising. Certainly nowhere near the sort of cancer cure that Pauling or anybody else has uh, stated it to be. So uh, that concludes uh, my thoughts on this topic. Uh, as always, uh, let me know what you think in the comments below.